Okay, so I've tried recording this several times. I'm going to give it one more shot. So the world seems a little bit wobbly right now, and that's okay. It, it, it's how it goes, because the world is always kind of changing, but we don't always necessarily recognize it that it is. So this technique that I'm going to get into is about trying to deepen a typical grounding meditation into something a little bit more core to who you are. So usually when things are pretty chaotic, I recommend a basic grounding meditation like the one I did last week and I sent out. So what this is, is it's going to enhance it and make it a little bit more durable by getting beyond just an, an immediate quick fix. Let's say, you know, and, and the meditation I did last week is basically you're up in your head or you're not really paying too much attention to your environment because, it, you know, your mind's going a million miles an hour in all different places and stuff like that. And the goal of that was to basically get you back in the present moment. Um, sometimes, though, that's not ideal because um, we don't have a good relationship, period, with our environment. This could be, you know, it could be anywhere from trauma to awareness of current events, um, any, any one of those things. So the goal of this meditation is trying to deepen and get at the real core of what it is that makes you feel secure. And this is going to be a little bit more of a stretch for you. It's going to go beyond what I had in that meditation from last week. But the basic idea is this. Imagine that not only do you have your seven chakras, but within those seven chakras are what I'm going to call, just for lack of a better term, a sub chakra or a chakra within the chakra. And there are, um, there's, you know, precedent for this similarly for, let's say, the, um, the sephirot and the sephirot within the sephirot in, let's say, the tradition of counting the Omer in Judaism. Again, I'm not an expert on that. I'm myself, I'm not Jewish, but I've, you know, read some. <laughs> I, I have a working knowledge, let's put it that way. I don't claim expertise on any of these things just enough to have an idea to try something out. So that same idea, let's apply that to the chakras. So again, chakras within, uh, sub-chakras, which would be chakras within each of your major chakras. So the idea here is that you would imagine within your root chakra, uh, uh, seven chakras within it can say the root of the root chakra all the way up to the crown of the root chakra. And what you would do is you would take the idea of that heart of the root chakra, okay, and really meditate on that. And what, what I would say would be a normal response. So the idea, or, or, or let's let's start with the technique. So the technique would be just going ahead and me, like, let's say you're you're feeling kind of just a general existential um, anxiety, and the idea the idea that you would be uh, that you would work with is that you would imagine, let's say, whatever existential anxiety or um, core anxiety that you have. Imagine that as being a tightness within the heart of your root chakra. And you could imagine that tightness taking the form of a fist, right? A very clenched fist like this. And slowly you're going to, through an act of will, care, self-love, allow that to relax and just open up. And then just get very loose and limp. Almost as if you put your hand in a nice soothing, um, you know, lotion, let's say, a nice warm lotion, or maybe a um, something, a nice warm, uh, you know, bath. And just imagine that that's 
it, it's very soothing. You could imagine maybe there were Epsom salts in there, whatever it takes to sort of uh, evoke within you this idea of relaxation. And you realize that you can do that for any of your chakras. I'll just say that straight out. You can do that with your third eye, with your crown, whatever. But the idea here is that because you're doing it at the the heart of something when we talk about the heart we're talking about the very core right and so um if somebody if you if something if you feel like you've been punched in the chest by a news it's because something has shaken you straight to your core so the that's the expression that we use so the idea here is that the heart is not only the core but it's also the source of you know you know just speaking metaphorically here but it's it's the place where all the love and the things that are very important to us is kind of stored energetically, let's put it that way, in our subtle body, in the heart center, right? In the heart chakra. So and if that, if we can approach our feeling of security and notice that there's a, a core of love within that, then all of a sudden we realize going through the process, and this is all easier said than done, and it's, you know, it's all in a, a cumulative effect. But what happens is that we slowly allow the love that we have for the world that we're in to come out more. And regardless of whatever individual circumstances that we're in, the, that spirit of caring and concern for the world that we're in can override some either past experiences, immediate perceptions of the forms of what's happening in the world, that sort of thing. So this isn't going to be like, this is definitely a step beyond just straight up beginning, but it's something to really think about, especially as things kind of seem a little bit weird, you're not sure what to make of them, what's going on, and, and a general sense of unease. This will take you back to what is important to you and realize that by getting okay with your own sense of caring and concern for both yourself and the external environment, suddenly you're much more harmonized regardless of the form that the external world takes. So just give that a shot. Um, I'm not going to say that this is the perfect technique or it's going to be uh, whatever, it's going to be something that works for everybody in every way, every time, but try it, try it. And if it doesn't work, okay. You know, you tried something, it didn't work, move on to the next thing. Um, but I think that it will, if you, if you practice this, you kind of get the gist of what I'm saying. Hopefully that, that, that will, um, be something that will be of benefit to you. And notice too, that I'm just, I'm just laying this out here just for the root chakra as an example but if you can do that same thing and you can try this idea of sub chakras, you know, just as a way to, to um, develop and, and, and initiate some development and in ways that you might not have thought of before. And you can try it, try it in all sorts of ways. This is the sort of thing that, you know, when I, when I see other magicians or people who are very spiritual you know, they're, they're trying, and when I say magician, I'm saying like somebody who's taking kind of a, a maybe an innovative or, or, or experimental technique to um, how they express their spirituality. When I notice people who are more experienced, this is the way that they kind of think. They're thinking, okay, I, I understand this, but there's this larger goal, you know, whether, you know, whether it's something they're not aware of and they want to develop perception of it or they just want to um, see what they don't know or get at a different way of getting at the thing, the goal that they have. That's all I'm talking about when I say magic or a magic-ish technique to get um, some spiritual uh, development going in a way that they hadn't thought of before. This is what I've noticed that they do. They'll try, they'll tweak stuff. They'll get a little bit of a mad scientist cap on and then go for it. So anyway, just uh, let me know what you think in the comments and uh, just have a great rest of your day.